Welcome, Spikelings, to the Shark Typhoon. Dude, just like every day, we're like, alright, we trophied with this sick build, trophied with this sick build. It's just been so good lately. The le Modern has been, like... I Modern has, I think, been just vastly improved from the upper span. I, I've been so happy. I think this deck can be burned. Uh, cosmic Re We have Cosmic Rebirth in, for life gain. It's probably not, probably not such a bad matchup. I, I wouldn't sweat it too much. I imagine play draw matters a lot. Yeah, I think, I think I saw this one. Yeah, I said, finally, friends, violent outburst in its rifle place. See ya, space cowboy. Put a neon sign. It's, it's right here. It's here. So, like, the thing is, I put it in the background, and it looked, it looked really bad, and, like, the lighting was weird, because I, I rearranged the whole, the whole, uh, stream room. But it looked, it looked weird in the background, and I guess I'm getting green white and it's it, it, it I can't light it up here because it's too bright so I, I I've been having to, I've been struggling to figure out where it uh where it goes you keep a land here this isn't the same opponent is it hmm is where shades on stream to be honest, like I was having some bad eye problems. I had to, you know, to get new glasses, and my doc, my eye doctor is so funny. He's always just roasting the shit out of me. <laughs> just, just I don't know. He's we have he has a funny rapport. Um, um, but I, I've been, I've been, I, I between my eye doctor and Young Dingo, who's who has talked about, you know, how he just likes to walk for an hour before the stream. And I, I, I've, I've started to like walk for an hour every day after the stream and it's been awesome. It's just a great way to like clear my head after like talking nonstop. I, I end up like after the stream, usually I just don't like to talk for like an hour. Um, and so it's just good to just like wander for like an hour. And then that's my, my eyes have just been feeling like back to normal since doing that. And I've been, I would really recommend it to anybody who spends their days indoors. <laughs> going outside uh maybe i should maybe i should cycle lauren revealed in response to this get an island i was kind of wanting to hold up for blue card for force maybe we would hard cast it later feels okay to do this it's just been so nice i just i i got this hat in uh in spain last year for the the pt and i just like i just put on my hat Walk around for an hour. It's so nice. Can you walk for an hour in America without being called up? At least as a jaywalker. Yeah, usually it's like an hour and a half they get you. Um. Yeah. No. I don't. I. I my. My neighborhood is like got a lot of like kind of fun places to walk nearby. Not. Not the most fun ever, but uh, also my my neighborhood is also like pretty active too, which is nice. Like there's, um, there's like basically like uh, always people outside. <laughs> Just hanging out like there's a there's a guy who runs like a mechanic shop out of his garage that's like just like maybe like four houses down or something so i usually go and you know say hi to them for a bit i think we're supposed to play to fairy this turn okay let it go if i had solitude or force negation in my hand i would have counterspelled back bounced the clue token Hold it up. I'm gonna live stream the eclipse. I don't think so. I, I so the, the eclipse is my birthday. It's my thirtieth birthday, and it's like coming like right over where I live. So I'm a little spooked by it, but I'm gonna go. I'm embracing it, and we're gonna go look at the eclipse. Uh, on my birthday. So no stream on Monday. And also maybe maybe the end of the world on Monday. We'll see. Um, end of the world TBD. I kind of want to go witness with like a femorate counter spell up here. Whoops, is on my BD today. Happy birthday. Also, Caleb D's birthday is uh, the same as mine. And my twin sister's birthday <laughs> is the same because it, it could, it really could be coming for her. And then uh, actually, I also have a cousin who has the same birthday as me. Seeing the name next card drawn. Like, I'm just going to sing counter spell. I, just, I drew it. It's in the hand. 
It was second bolt. You just get to rebirth the stuff back. Okay, so yeah, you don't need to fight. Oh no, they get to they exile instead of killing it. It's kind of a bummer. Again, got to keep the counter spell up though against the creativity deck. Yeah, it is really cool to share a birthday with Caleb. Hopefully, I get to hang out with him a little bit uh, at RC Dallas. Graveyards of Creativity. Probably has one in hand. Who's older? I'm older by a little bit. Of course, of course, of course, a little bit, right? So I drew, that's great draw. I guess now I'm just keeping second counter spell up. The dates of RC Dallas? I I don't actually know. I know I'll be there. It'll be hard for me to miss. Can we expect a PowerPoint? Yeah, I'll, I'll be doing one. I did a mini PowerPoint already. If y'all are like really thirsty for uh, spoiler review content, I I did I did one on the first day of spoilers because the first day of spoilers was so wild. I didn't want to just wait the whole time. Uh, okay, which will you be pinging today? Oh, blessing! I'm not expecting that. Um, yeah, I, I already I already did a mini one. But I, so I, 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 I doubt I'll be able to do the PowerPoint until next week sometime, unless, unless I don't stream tomorrow's challenge, um, to, and I just do it tomorrow. I could do it tomorrow or, you know, get most of it done tomorrow. The problem with that though, is I'm not streaming Monday. So I, I, I usually don't like to take three dot days off in a row. So we'll see. Okay. So they have a second copy of Leyland Binding. All right, got to target the witness here, especially with them not having the ability to creativity this turn, I think. Yeah, they've already played a land. Kind of shocked they didn't ping with the Ren and Six. I think it was a big punt. Uh, I'm going to grab a Prismatic Ending to deal with this Ren and Six. Arc on next turn, yeah. I, I hope my opponent hard cast arc on every turn in this game. Just have infinite counter spells. Surely, if I go ten and zero on the stream today, I've I've deserve I deserve to play Bellatro on stream. Feels more than fair. A little Bellatro as a treat, but only if we ten zero. Hey Todd, I saw we sideboarded on the draw last time and and we won. So how bad could this plan be? No hit Bellatro run? Hell yeah. Uh, I don't know what counts as a hit, but we'll figure it out. Never played Diablo, no. I haven't seen like much gameplay of it. Maybe it's maybe it's great. I, I did start to play Red Dead Redemption 2 for the first time this week. I've actually played a lot of video games this week after like not playing for a while. Uh, I tried to get into Dragon's Dogma 2. I ended up just, I think it's not for me. Steer you back to Dark Souls. <laughs> I do miss Dark Souls. I do miss Dark Souls. Been watching a lot of Hob and uh, Dino lately. Okay, I like the you on the draw. Like I kind of think the main thing you're looking for is like maybe just not losing to Rin and Six. So ha being able to go turn one Needle Rin and Six is something I like a lot about this hand.
Griff Lands is my favorite deck builder. Never heard of it. Probably great. They have Spell Pierce and Turin. Maybe we'll lose a game. I did finish Baldur's Gate 3. That was a long time ago, though. And I, I started like an evil playthrough I didn't finish. I got to Act 3. Uh, jeez, dude. Um, and me and Esther were doing a co-op campaign for a while, and Esther got kind of bored of it. Okay, now we strategically whiffed on our archaeologist so that we can attack the Ren and Six. Yeah, Esther, Esther played it through. I, I played it through all the Mass Effect games, and then I got the remaster, and then Esther played through all of them. But I, I would do the combat, and she would uh, just do the dialogue choices. But since then, Esther's become more of a competent gamer. She's been playing a lot of Legend of Zelda. And, uh, she she beat Hades too. She she got she got through the the story of Hades recently. How's it possible to ferment upkeep two times targeting the same targeting the same creature? Um, yeah, so it that works because you rebound is a trigger. So like on your upkeep, rebound triggers, rebound triggers. You resolve each trigger separately. So when the first one is cast, the other one still hasn't been cast yet. I think above average card. Let's keep it on top. Yeah, Hades is so good. I used to play Hades on stream too a bunch. Like in, in between tournaments, we would just do Hades runs all the time. I'm pretty excited for Hades 2 this year. Any Thunder Junction cards you like for the deck? I don't know. Thunder Junction's a very overwhelming set for me at the moment. There's so much, so much going on. Favorite Hades build? I like the bow that you like you shoot you shoot once and then you do the special and then all the specials hit the the one that you shot okay deck tech for inner w mono white I do hate this card. <laughs> it's very odd to me to be playing it in a deck with like I we have you have 13 creatures in the deck and four of them are ornithopters. What is happening? So confusing. Three sunken citadels looks pretty bad in this list. I understand that you're trying to pair them with the Urza sagas. It's just like not enough. Like you only have four Urza sagas that work with them. I think I think you could play one or zero second citadel if you only have four sagas and no like field of ruins and stuff. Which is also like too many tap lands. This is five tap lands. Um I do think an idyllic grange would also be pretty good. You have a lot of fetch lands, and like an idyllic grange does just it does just matter a lot. Um In the Leyline Scion Mirrors. I guess you also have Urza Saga for creatures, but I, I, I mostly think that this card is not a good card. And in order to like facilitate the deck building requirements of Reign of Truth, your card quality is really low. <laughs> and you're not even like a good aggro deck, which is weird, right? Because like this card requires you to have like a ton of creatures. You don't have that many creatures. It requires you to have a ton of creatures and Playing around Ephemerate pretty well. I haven't had a lot of Leyland Bindings go after Archaeologist here. I think I'm supposed to Counterspell. But if, if you're gonna if you really like this card, if you really like Grain of Truth, you, you need you need to play like a lot of creatures. Like like 12 more creatures in your deck, probably. And then your deck won't be very good. Full 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 disclaimer, your deck will be mediocre, so. Take a force mutation here. So I'm not I'm not sure exactly how to reconcile that, but you know that's maybe your problem. <laughs> I'm gonna try modern boggles. Ah, uh, well, it's not probably. Okay, another counter. So lucky. 
but Buggles is, has just become so bad over the years. It just like doesn't have a lot going for it. It's not that interesting. I was at one point trying to play like blue black Boggles with like Phyrexian Crusader and um and uh, Invisible Stalker with Grief Scam, Subtlety Scam, and a bunch of curiosities. So like you're drawing a bunch of cards with your curiosities and then uh doing something presumably after that. You're like drawing a bunch of cards with your curiosities and <laughs> uh using them to pitch the elementals. It was awful, never made it to the stream. Dude, the, the, the spell pierce in the Ren Six was so so good. There's not a lot of decks that can do something that can do something to boggles right now. This is the boggles copium. Let me let me I'm gonna keep get back to this deck list deck deck in a second. See if I have any more thoughts. Probably okay. It's probably okay against uh, Domain Zero. They, they do have like Leyline Binding and like a bunch of like Disenchant post board. Gorios completely ignores it. Yogmoth completely ignores it. Monogram Grinchon completely ignores it. And Oblivion stones you. Amulet Titan completely ignores it. Uh, it's probably pretty good against Smirk Tide. Creativity, Archon of Cruelty, Sax, Screw Scam takes it all of your hands. Omnath has a ton of Disenchants. Mill completely ignores it. Uh, Hammer is like better boggles. Scales completely ignores it. <laughs> It's like, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like you 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 you're good like many decks in modern. You're like kind of good against the the fair creature decks, and then you're completely bad against the linear, completely awful against the linear decks. And this is like super, super true for Boggles. You're good against the creature decks, like the fair like tempo strategies, and you are, you like cannot you kind of just cannot win against uh, <laughs> the the big mana decks, the combo decks, which is a huge part of modern at the moment. I think we're supposed to agree with that. Let me get a forest. So we draw a blue card. We have force of negation up. I think I just need to bounce this. True blue card. But again, I, 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 this, this is a really common boggle flowchart over like the last, uh, over the last uh, few years. Like, hmm, maybe boggles is good, and then it isn't, and then, but it's just like it's just it's very easy to, um, think about hmm, maybe boggles is secretly good, but it it just gets so ignored by. Okay, so you so you have updated list. I would I would not play more than one idyllic Grange. Um, I think I would probably, I, if you're going to play the Grange, I would play one Grange, I'd be minus one Citadel probably and just play two more fetch lands. I like the Etch Champions. Um, let's get those up to four probably. Uh, and why don't we play Stoneforge Mystic over Ornithopter and grab, be able to grab Cauldra, Shadow Spear, Nettle Cyst. Maybe You could also maybe play Coat because you already have a blue source, but. I want to. I, I don't like these ornithopters. I, I want to see them be probably Stoneforge Mystics. Portable Hole isn't like a very good card at the moment. You could probably just cut all of them. Um, I could also cut the Reign of Truths. Love to see the real time deck editing. I, I I really like the Edge Champions too. I, I kind of feel like you could just go like cut the Reign of Truths and then you just put a, put a Nettle Cyst on your Scion. Just do that instead. Put a Nettle Cyst on your Edge Champion. Maybe maybe play a Cranial Plating. Okay, I don't have the double black to hardcast Archon. I like that champions, though. That's a phrase I don't hear a lot anymore. Yeah, it's true. I think that champion's pretty pretty sick. Maybe it gets a little too ignored too. I was messing around with it for a long time. Okay, let's go to game. Like I said, let's see if they had brought brought in like a different creature. Sometimes that happens. Nope. Okay, game three. Does an instrument not both ley line and equipment? Ooh. Yeah. That's true. So maybe not then. Because on the play, I'm going to cut the pending. 
for the third warp. Click submit. Owls the third, two months. Thank you, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. What if Boggles just submitted this and started playing blue for counter spells? Yeah, I don't know. Like blue for like curiosity and counter spells could be a thing. There is a green curiosity. But also, if you want to do the Boggle thing, you should probably just play Leyline Scion. Like that's that's Boggles if it were, if it was good. That's five oh. Thanks, elves. Almost at a million, yeah, almost at a million channel points. I hope to see you redeem the VRP or mod soon. All right, tapped Xander's Lounge. We're gonna get a archive. Graveyard Solitude. Not found land number three yet. I'm just taking Teferi. I'll, I'll force of negation, maybe pitching. Probably, I guess, pitch time warp. If they run in six, I don't think I'm taking Needle. I have enough emerald already. Kept that shipment too, because I understand we're not the best with range with land equipment. Because Yeah, I think so too. Good luck to you. I, I do like the white based artifact decks. I've been kind of thinking about them a little bit. Kind of miss. I miss feeling like. Um, Ingenious Smith was a, a playable card too. Hmm. Don't think I'm going to jam Teferi into a admittedly likely spell pierce. So I'm going to get a breeding pool. Cast another archaeologist. And then probably ephemerate end of turn. Dude, we added added the Lorian revealed, brother. Let's freaking go. We played the played the league five oh and still still made a couple changes, getting paid off. Lily dressed on edicts at Lowe's, maybe mutate hexproof counters the future. <laughs> I feel like Liliana edicts are at are at an all time high, aren't they? <laughs> right? All right? Let's just island cycle here. Could, have, could see maybe going cutting out surveil land for Lord and Reveal. I'm not sure at the moment. Opponent is just so likely to have spell pierce. Let's just keep chilling, I think. Michichi getting 1 1 from Leyline, Binding Silence, Birth Exploring. Maybe. maybe. I, I just historically have thought that the card is like pretty low, low, low quality, low power level. I, I could be wrong. I, I, there are some people who really like it. I know Ash, she really likes the card. Um. I know Doom Wake liked the card too. I, I just I just feel like I played against it a lot and just feel like it's like so so easy to play around, so slow, so disruptible. Um like that that chapter two especially is like your your plays are just so telegraphed. Lots of new boggles combo being printed. New card called Demonic Ruckus plotted turn two into turn two light laws, immediately alpha authority for hexproof and block level three three. The end game soon after. Two card combo. Uh, I'll have to read Demonic Ruckus. It's quite the card name. Um, a 3-3 three, three Hexproof Unblockable. I, like, in, in, in modern, at least, this is kind of just, like, not something that sounds like it... <laughs> it, it you know, there, there's there's lots of combos like this that are not so scary. Maybe we'll just start, you know, trading some resources here. But if you, if you could link Demonic Ruckus, I'll take a look. I am familiar with... Light paws, of course. Yeah, I, I can't let them get me with this veil, I guess. This is kind of brutal. Yeah, maybe, yeah, I guess, yeah, and Pioneer, maybe it's something, yeah. Dang. I guess I should have just let it go. Yeah, I think Jace casting Valky Tibbolt has some potential. Wait, they have another spell pierce? Or they're thinking about maybe killing my uh, archaeologist in response? Was that a 5 for 2? Uh, I don't want to keep track. I think it was 5 for 3. Although the archaeologist... Uh, so they got they got up a card on Veil, up a card on the... Ors? I'm going to pay for spell pierce. Cannot believe they had 
They're casting four one mana spells this turn. It's pretty brutal. Yeah, I'm just gonna pay and bounce. I, if they also just have Dorvid Mind Creativity, you know, good shit. When the streak ended, take a draw step. Oh, okay. They don't have that. They do have a card that is somehow worse for me. I have to draw another Teferi. Can't even get my surveil. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I was supposed to go like Archaeologist Chump. Play out both Archaeologist Chump twice. I don't know. Their veil draw. I thought I was counting it. Okay, Demonic Ruckus. This card? So you go plot into Light Paul's cast it Alpha Authority. It seems pretty good. It seems like a pioneer level thing to me. And like not likely something that changes things too much. Do double surveil. My plus went to fairy. Seemed like that could maybe been a. Okay, my my opponent wanted it more. I'm done. <laughs> they wanted it more. Is what it is. When streak ended, this week's trophy still. Well, greedily still Bellatrio. Okay, this is bad if I draw a counterspell maybe, but I'm gonna still lead on the tap land here. Maybe I think once one Norn is like, yeah, maybe. Kind of like thought. Yeah, basically never uh, force of negation anything. Turn one. We did beat Tron last time we played the matchup last league. So kind of scary. Let this resolve. Would have forced a map, I think. Or maybe, I guess I would have, like, maybe Teferi bounced map. They find a one ring. Excuse me, the one ring. Let's surveil. I feel like I'm probably supposed to... I was going to say archaeologist looking for a witness to try to get the time warp combo assembled. But now let's just draw a witness... Uh, witness back the land and then we can use the archaeologist to dig for an ephemerate to time warp combo uh, I think big the sim similar 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 rockham synthesizer will probably be unplayable um it, I there it's just it's so incredibly rare that you can play a three mana do nothing that you have to untap with and it's requiring you to untap with like lots of gas for it to do anything. It's like three mana, three mana scry two. And then you have to have multiple three mana artifacts or more into the battlefield to trigger it. Maybe with frog might and mirror enforcer, it gets the job done. And which for me is like kind of a hard, maybe I I'm not, I'm not like really buying that. Like you're going to get, you're going to cast this for three mana in affinity, which is kind of tough and then have just like all of your affinity cards to trigger it. Could be wrong, but that, that does seem like kind of the only situation where it'll be good, and then affinity still likely seems like it'll be not that good. I think I should force this map. Uh, this could be like very good bait for my opponent, but if it's bait, I'm taking it. Ephemerate? Yeah, thought monitor too, but it's just like this. This is also it's just also not. It, it probably does not make Affinity a playable deck. Still, I would I would imagine. All right, looking for an ephemery, looking for love. Last surveil land. Better than Urza, yeah, probably not. I, it's, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm not very optimistic about the card. 
I'm glad that some people are. It's got a lot of good top decks, and Ephemerate uh, is a game ender. I guess the problem with Ephemerate is we can't attack. They'll have pro everything as we take our infinite turns. We'll be able to build up enough resources to get the job done. Don't have a fourth color. Maybe should have a fourth color for tomorrow if I play this in the challenge. Yeah, milling three lands on ironically, kind of a draw stream. But it's been getting kind of unlucky on that. They find the power plant now. Yeah, a lot, a lot of lands we've gone through here. Relic does stop the time warp loop. All this dust sends us into game two. I think we, I think we two, yeah, we two Tron last time, somehow. So last time I did 2-2 two, two, pick your poison pending split. Let's do, I guess, probably 3-1. I'm gonna sorry, cut the Teferis. You could put one solitude. Just don't really care that much about worm coil. Subtleties in. Yeah, I think this was the build last time, which I think I think looks solid. You know, you we're just we're trying to like, you know. Buy time until we set up our time warp combo to win. Could use Cryptic Command to come with Witness. Uh, cryptic Command is not a playable modern card. Uh, don't put it into your deck. Ah, uh, yeah, I kind of like that. This is digging for the the combo. Yeah, the win. So if you have Eternal Witness, Ephemerate, Time Warp, you get to take infinite turns. The statement hurts. Well, if it hurts, you've been like living in denial for years at this point, which, you know, sounds nice. Keep it tied, binder. <laughs> I did put it in this other deck, but also, you know, sometimes cost three in that deck. Cryptic Commando's Pioneer. Could you play it? Yeah, Cryptic Command would be I think pretty good in Pioneer with like Gear Hulk being a playable card. Do Gear Hulk Cryptic Command. Let's go, dude. Now that's a format. Yeah, I've played I've played Silence in the past. Silence could be good for this matchup. It's kind of like redundant with time warp to some extent but it's like a little bit cheaper to get going at the moment what i'm thinking is that i i'm really likely to play this deck in the in the challenge tomorrow and i'm really likely to like just sleep on the sideboard a little bit good about the main deck again could could want another Lorien revealed so they're probably gonna grab a saga I think I just have to probably let this go they grab a forest and then they play an Urza's tower and then they pass the turn leaving me free to surveil to my heart's content Thank you, Surveil Lands. You're so good. <laughs> Screw you, Surveil Lands. <laughs> Give me spells. <clears throat> this my opponent doesn't have spells either. Oh, that's a I guess I am a hypocrite for graveyarding this. Having witness in play does make like the combo a lot faster, but but also it's just like what's the witness back a spell? <laughs> hmm. 
This is a very odd game. I put a six cards in their hand. Just kind of just not not doing anything. I have a hard time imagining I need to counterspell, counterspell, hard cast a three drop this next turn. Yeah, so some dismembers make some sense. <laughs> Maybe I'll witness back a land this next turn. Only had bricked on this archaeologist who could be could have dealt like ten damage with it. Seems like a good reprieve candidate since they're maybe choked on green mana. It's a very weird game. So we'll see if they want to get into a fight over this. I'm likely going to fight a little bit over it. Don't know if I'm going to double counter. Okay, half two is good. So we're looking for a time warp. Find a pri or one of prismatic ending. Why snow cover lands? Uh, you're, you're bluffing Ice Fang in your deck, which is like a card people will think about in your Ephemerate uh, Bant deck. Okay, still looking for Time Warp. Should have tapped uh, one of these, actually. Don't find it. Um, it does look pretty safe to... Tap out for a witness here, or tap down for a witness. We have just so much interaction up. I think a little bit worried about them finding Ulamog off this, but it wouldn't even be the end of the world. Wouldn't actually, even, wouldn't even actually be that bad at all. <laughs> Thank you, know, Gracing us with her presence. They do find an Ulamog. I'm kind of shocked it took them that long to choose choose the Mog or whatever. They play a power plant. Turn 9 Ulamog is the first threat. Kind of like my opponent cast a single rampant growth. Right, I think we're just going to go down two lands. Don't, can't, don't think we're supposed to Tidebinder the Ulamog trigger. Can't get the Ulamog off the board, right? Yeah, I have double Ulapog concede. This is just still so funny. <laughs> is this the PowerPoint waiting room? Yeah, we're waiting a little bit longer on it, unfortunately. I'm trying. They could resolve a spell. Come on. V Crow with these six months. Thank you. Welcome back. Well played by them, though. Very disciplined. I'm just holding up. Counterspell, counterspell force. Okay, I will cast a counterspell with that, I guess. Ravioli, the nine months. Thank you, welcome back. Counterspell is kind of like a cryptic command, but it only costs two mana instead of four. It has less flavor text. Wait, they have second Ulapog? Huh. Hopefully they don't have a third one of those in their deck.
We're down some lands. We're okay. I don't have that many fetchables left, <laughs> though. Um, I think my first ephemerate is getting back the planes, and then like I can get back the other ephemerate on the on this one. I can get back the I can get back a ephemerate here, and then another ephemerate off the the one the other one. You know, we're, we're chaining them. So, I have Force of Negation up. I think I, what I'll do is play Narset, which turns off their stars, spheres, ring. Look for look for a uh, time warp. We find the time warp. And we're going to be able to take infinite turns starting next turn. Although, we actually have a little bit of a problem... Because my opponent has exiled four of my lands. I, I guess I'd still have a, I still have a forest in the deck, right? But I I have a forest, so I don't, I don't know that I'll actually be able to... I guess I can get... I can subtlety ephemerate. I can subtlety ephemerate. But like, like, I, my, my, the, the problem is getting another like threat in play. To actually pressure my opponent's life total, but I, I I'll, I'll be able to eventually subtlety ephemerate after I find um, the extra forest to ephemerate twice on the same turn, or maybe I should be getting back a fetch land. It, it'll be okay. They, they can see. Okay, yeah, we trophied with this. Okay, on the draw, I think we're just gonna run it back. Nice to beat two Ulamogs. It took them a little while to cast it. They say that they're never going to add St. Catherine to the chest. Yep. Weird. At least at least it's all magic online now. A living time warp? <laughs> living in a time warp. I'll be living in a time warp after the eclipse. It's Mox of Days showing one pick of poison. Uh, it shouldn't be. I, I guess I messed up when I was updating it. Should be three pick of poison, one force of vigor. Maybe I got those numbers backwards. Pick your poison. Worse than pending. Count one. Oh shoot! Sorry, I needed to play get a breeding pool. I, I'm still making them sack though, because they they they, they multiply. There's a really good chance they need the chromatic star to get them green to cast Sylvan Scrying or Ancient Stirrings. Classica. Moxfield update punt. Are we actually still casting this anyways though? Okay, we need to fade Natty Tron on their multi five. Although I did give them an extra card, I suppose. Yay to see it. Figures it seems so good, mating them seems fine. Maybe it is bad against a lot of decks. I don't know. Or enough decks probably just goes in your sideboard. You can play one. But it finds a Karn, and I think we are finding a Bellatra stream. Oh, I'll. I'll I'm trying to figure out, like, how... I guess I could draw my Needle. Wait, did I forget? I, I brought in the Needle, right? Top deck Needle probably stabilizes us. I spoke with the 49 months. Number one Bellatro plus number one Modern Streamer on the planet. Hell yeah. They grab a Tormod script. Okay. No Bellatro yet. We got a plan. Where's Blotro? Ah, it's the best game in the world, brother. It's, uh, well, tune in. I'll, I'll be playing some of it later today, I think. I'm listening to the theme right now. The music is so hypnotic. Nowadays, what's the probability of your opponent's deck does not have artifact, enchantment, or flying creature with killing? So there's, there's... It's bad, it's bad against Goryos, which is like 9% of the metagame. It's bad against Yawgmoth. It's like it's bad against two of these top decks. It's okay against Tron. It's good against Titan. It's good against Murktide. It's, it's mediocre against Creativity. They do, it, it's, you know... It's not very good against Scam. It's not good against Mill. Yeah, it's just... it's just Let's, let's sideboard the card, brother. Um, so they're going to get Sundering Titan here. Refunded Blotro. Okay, then. It's obviously not every game is for everybody. 
I, I, boy, I could not get enough of it though myself. I'm, 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 I'm proud of you for withstanding the, the urge. Stepping culture seems fine. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's not a good card in the matchup. Like you, you know what I mean. Like you could maybe play one, but it's like kind of suboptimal. Okay, I think, I think this is, we got a really good chance this game. Top, we we've been top deck of the tight binder well. Yeah, I know I I know about Slay the Spire. I've heard that it is a uh, similar. Thought you turn music off for it. Now you listen to I'm playing. Uh yeah, it's just too good. I'm kind of scared of Urza Saga. Although they didn't get a Saga last game, I guess. Seems okay to do this. Rebound on the um, archaeologist. Um, it's not a great hit off the ty off the archaeologist, but I'm gonna I'm rebounding the ephemerate, so I just want to make sure I have like at least one hit. The surveil there. These both basically pop the Tormod's Crypt, right? Guess I'll just take the Pick Your Poison. I think we'll use it now. I don't think we'll need double counter spell up this turn. So they do sacrifice an artifact. They also get to exile my graveyard. Got to dodge an Ulapog for a little bit. I haven't added the fourth color for pending. I don't know. The the, man, the thing is the mana is already like sketchy. We have uh, a lot of a lot of like lands that we have three four we have four lands that don't cast counter spell in our twenty four land deck, which is like borderline but okay. We have double green. We have double blue. We have double white. We have double green on turn three. We have double white double blue on turn two. Where you want double white for ephemerates a lot of times. So I I think the fourth color is like it, it is to me tricky. Is it is it optimal? I probably I I just I, I just don't know how I would include it, but I, I will I will chew on it a little bit tonight. Yeah, Tidebinder is a wizard. I'll just go ahead and uh zero mana deal three damage. Draw a card. Kind of broken. Don't you like a filter lands in TF decks? I don't, I don't think so. Cause like like I don't I don't know what land I'd cut for a filter land, and I don't know. I if you flooded flooded grove would probably be the one. But if you have basic planes, flooded grove is bad. We only have one planes. You you could play a flooded grove, but it doesn't help with the. Uh, Prismatic ending. A single steam vents, maybe. But like I I would love well, well if you if you want to add the fourth color, what land would you cut? Okay, so they're dead to. I am tapping down to just one counter spell if I cast this witness. Oh, sorry, I, I just I just pick up a land because I don't need the time warp. There, I just I just have five and I have five. Off color triumph over surveil land. Yeah, I guess I guess that would be it. Play like Anaya triumph over the over the green white surveil land. All right, we mostly just need to dodge Ulapog, so I'll counter this. They could be sandbagging like multiple really good threats, I guess, but it doesn't really feel like they are. I guess I maybe should be reprieving instead. Got there. 
2 0 against Tron. I kind of feel like I would maybe like another cyborg card against it. Counting strings went into Veil pretty hard. Yeah, it's just like, I'm just like, they, I, I don't think they have Ulamog in their hand. And I, I to me, it seems like the main way I lose that game is they find Ulamog off the stirring, so. I don't know. Seemed okay. So, so we would put our Naya Trium on the yard here. I'll I'll chew on the I'll chew on the the land stuff a little bit more though. It seems seems like a pretty close decision point no matter what. Naya seems awkward with counter spell. I mean, it's not any more awkward than the than the green white tri uh, surveillance we have at the moment. We have we have twenty lands that cast counter spell. It's a pretty good number. I agree. It could be better. So much creativity today. This could be like green red like Valakit stuff. Could still be green red Valakit stuff. Naya escape shift is kind of somewhat popular. Keep a card on top here. Man, trying would make a lot man a lot better. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I I think it's it's an interesting conversation. It's it's all pretty borderline. I I will definitely I I I'm def I don't know. There's there's so many decks we could play in tomorrow's challenge. Right now, I kind I want to play this one. I just love when Banta Fimrate's good, and it's also like it's a really good challenge deck. I think where like it's 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 hard to play too much of this on stream because the leagues go so long. But it's really good for challenges because like the you you just you you want rounds to go long so you have like less downtime unless you want to play Bellatro. <laughs> um so I think it's a really good uh challenge deck. What are the bad matchups? Uh we're one on one against creativity. Creativity I don't think is so bad because of force of vigor. I don't know. I just haven't really been doing a lot of losing. It's you know to some extent it's like I built this control deck to like be kind of well to be tuned for the metagame and so I don't feel like there's too much that I'm really scared of, and I also don't feel like there's too much that I that you just crush besides Murktide and Hammer. <laughs> the you know, the usual suspects. This feels worth counterspelling to me. Yogg may not be great. I mean, we're a prismatic ending leyline. Or Solitude Ephemerate deck. It's it, it's kind of hard for that for the Yogg matchup to be super bad. I yeah, I'm really not worried about it. I think. I mean, Yogg is a really good deck. I, we're not going to beat it every time, of course, but. Linval seems to go separate cards versus Tron Titan. Linval is like not very good against Titan. Uh, it's okay, I guess. It stops packed and can maybe sometimes stops the ring. But like two mana meddling mage packed, like only summers packed is like worse than meddling mage would be. I've played meddling mage in the past in these archetypes. Linval also Linval just sucks, dude. Like especially against Tron, like they have just so many four mana. Four mana non creature spells. They just wait a turn to cast Karn in the ring and Oblivion Stone. Linvala, in my opinion, is like historically like the most overrated card. <laughs> People just think they think so highly of it, but it, it doesn't really do that much. So I think I would prefer to like end of turn pending the reflection. If they don't play anything into my mana this turn, which I think is somewhat likely. So instead they're playing into my reprieve.
I just need to use that mana here so I can hold, go witness. Oh. Yeah, this doesn't stop. Oh, I can't pending X equals three. I don't have triple green. So I should have got Temple Guard in there. Shoot. Still, it's pretty tough for them to just, like, jam creativity again into all this mana, but also have to vary in play, so they may feel like they don't have a choice. Yeah, it seems like they're pretty likely to just hold up, like, Fable activations. Okay, now maybe I should go, like, Solitude block and exile this. Which doesn't play very well around it. Yeah, I guess we just kind of lose to another... Dwarven Mine, and they obviously just have so many Dwarven Mines in the deck. Kind of close. Yeah. Not dead. We have instant speed pending. We, we, pending cannot exile reflection for one mana. So I'm going to sack the Teferi with the intention of returning Teferi with Witness and casting it, bouncing the Archon. It may cost three mana depending on Reflection. Are you pending up for mine? Oh, duh, sorry. I don't know, I don't know why... Yeah. I don't, yes, sorry. You're right, you're right, you're right. Pending up for the mine is what you're saying. Yes, that line... Uh, Sol Solitude Exile block was better. Not in the worst shape ever here. Yeah, dude, Lavinia doesn't do anything against Tron. It makes it makes them wait one turn on their Ring or Karn, and then no, they they if they play an Ugin, it stops Ugin. But a lot of people don't play Ugin. No, people don't play Karn Liberated anymore. <laughs> this doesn't do this blank against them. Yeah, Flip Saga is still 3 of CMC. Yeah, sorry. We, we definitely should have exiled in the block, though. It would have been an awesome line. Why not during your turn, E witness on Counterspell? Um, I did do that, didn't I? Oh, no, sorry. I decided I wanted to hold up the Solitude instead. Um, because it, I was worried about the, 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 double, the double Solitude just being a little too efficient. Hopefully, we can kill this Teferi. Okay, it looks like we can. I think we're gonna win despite certainly being able to have played this game better. I also detect both for no reason. Okay, I'm gonna take the Bellatra music out of my ears. <laughs> <laughs> I blame this. Sorry, I obviously just missed three damage. I blame Bellatra. Rest in peace, Spike being a focused modern player, 2019 to 2000. 2024. Right, it should be worth countering this. Yeah, didn't, we didn't play around bold. We had to ferry and play. I was just hypnotized by the jazz. Okay, so I am out of a uh, out of surveillance because I surveilled one earlier. Yeah, typhoon. The get a little. Flooded. It's okay. I'm hard to complain too much about it. They need a blood crypt. I guess they can just go fetch blood crypt, cast Archon here. Then if I top deck another brick, we probably have to go like bounce witness, return a counter spell. They're dead to a top decked uh time warp. Surveillance seems like a major buff to flag since it's okay. Iki, your recent smallpox deck. Any thoughts on boom bust, cleansing wildfire, cracked earth? Yeah, that's it's a good thought for sure. Um certainly a buff to those archetypes. I I'm unsure how well they would be doing at the moment, though. Okay, so we're definitely minusing our Teferi now, because we can just get it back with the cosmic rebirth. So minus here. We draw a Teferi. It does look like I just have enough mana to go witness back counterspell, cast Teferi plus. Leonard with the two months. Thank you. Welcome back. 
Yeah, but that is a good thought about Boombus Flagstones being a little bit better. Shout out to the missed three damage. Yeah, th th I think this is like historically my favorite deck in Modern to play. I remember back when Uro was legal, we got second place in back-to-back -back challenges. Uh, with like with with Mystic Sanctuary and Uro, like when you you could go Uro, put a land into play, ephemerate your Uro, um, and then and then in response to the rebound trigger on ephemerate, cast Ice Fang, draw a card off of it. Oh, it was so it was so juicy. And you did play Cryptic Command in that deck because Cryptic Command was really good with Mystic Sanctuary. Okay, so we're on the draw against Creativity for the third time today. Right now we're one and one against Creativity. I guess this is to decide. Who's favorite in the matchup? I think we lost both sideboard games last time. I think I'm going to keep the sideboard plan, though. You, you play against Burn, you go Uro, Ephibrite, Uro, gain six, five lands in play. <laughs> They'd be like, uh, okay. It was before Solitude was a thing, though. I remember, I remember thinking subtlety when, when MH two first came out. I remember thinking subtlety and solitude were so back on Bantafit right control. It only took two and a half years post MH two. Getting flashbacks to the spell pierce into Renin six game. We 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 went needle. They spell pierce and they Renin six to me last time we played cre creativity. Or Orvar meta again? Yeah, I, I, I've been playing Orvar in some decks lately. Usually if I feel like the deck is like kind of weak to creativity, I'll play Orvar. Um, and, and this deck, you just play Force of Negation, I think. I remember back when creativity was like super popular, or like whenever, whenever there was like a couple, a couple of Vegas tournaments ago. Um, I played Blue-White Control. I started off 5-0, and oh, and then... I could have drawn. I could have drawn into the the playoffs for the the beta draft, and then I got I got some bad info, unfortunately. Um, but creativity was super popular, and all the blue white players like the creativity matchup is so unwinnable. It's so bad. I just I don't know. I I just far I was just farming them all day with uh some main deck force of negations. I I can't even remember if I I think I had three in the main. I just I was just farming creativity all day. It was like because you had force of negation, you could just tap out for Teferi. It was awesome. You could just tap out for Teferi. If they play Fable, I'm just going to go Teferi bounce the token. If they play their own Teferi, I'm going to force a negation it. They, 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 they did Teferi mana there, so I <laughs> thought I was going to have to force a negation. The Lotus Ring is kind of interesting with Zerda and equip cost for one. Sounds interesting. Yeah, I, I think it's yeah. I it's probably more of a pioneer power level thing. There's some there's some cool combos with it. I'll definitely be giving some thought to Lotus Ring and not not necessarily expecting it to do much. This shoe's players play more removal than counterspell. Yeah. Yeah, and the, like for, force of negation just solved the problem so much. Just actually be able to tap out for your cards. Pretty different format back then, though. They discard another Fable and a Lightning Bolt. Kind of shocked they discard another Fable here. Maybe just really trying to creativity me. I don't have really any juice left. Deck seems soft to Leyline and Cyan on the draw. Sometimes we're one to zero against Leyland Scion decks. We got a bunch of bigger poisons on the sideboard. It's a fairy time raveler as a an out. Although this is also like pick your poison brain. Oh, they're they're trying. So they have Veil of Summer in their hand, or they're just the best bluffer in the world. I guess that was the last time warp. Uh, no, I I only boarded up one. I mean, I've been keeping three in on the play and then boarding out one on the draw. Yeah, Tidebinder's got to be 
keepable here. Don't know if I'm going to hold a double ephemerate. It's pretty, it's like a little too telegraphed that my last card's another ephemerate. The one of Tybinding has been really good. I, I could certainly see playing a second second one in the board. Don't think I want a main deck at just too many threes in the main deck. I think the new change was something, something like your charge card deck. Yeah, I think the first copy is good in that deck. I I think I think it'll be good in scales, it'll be good in that deck, and um That's kind of it. I I think you could maybe you could maybe try it in like a fervent blade deck and Fervent Blade decks are still not that good. So it has Veil of Summer 2 mystery cards. I think I am uh, attempting to Stone Rain here again. If they have another Creativity, we could probably lose to that. I'm punished for not shocking. Maybe we'll be... Any chance for Dice Factory after yesterday? I'm, I think I'm going to wait till the new Jit Day comes out till we play it again, but we will play it again with the new Jit Day. I'm going to take this trade. Ooh. Let's take the trade, keep the Teferi. Like, I think opponent has Veil. They, Teferi is, I think, probably doing enough. Kind of, kind of stinks because we do have the second Ephemerate, but... Get kind of punished. So let's cast this to fairy. My opponent might just oh so they can't cast I sorry. They can't cast fail in response. Okay. I'm not gonna cycle that, I imagine. No creativity is there rough. Yeah, they already cast one. Does Rhino seem underplayed? Yeah, right Rhino's is an incredible deck that nobody's playing. I had a bad day with Dice Factory. We did we did play I think like four unfavorable matchups in a row, but it does it does it does just also seem like the meta game is like Tron and creativity all of a sudden, which kind of stinks because like I think I think we missed our window for like, uh, for the for the for the deck to be more reasonable. Rhinos is really bad, unfortunately. I, I think this is not true. I I, th I think you have to play Leyline Scion Rhinos. I think that the you no longer have like. I have three mana up. Good fucking luck playing around my hand, brother. I could have Flame of Anor. I could have Tie Binder. I could have Violent Outburst. I could have Force of Negation. I could have Force of Negation plus one of these cards. You know, you no longer get to do that. But I don't know. Like we 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 did a Rhinos League when they banned Violent Outburst and like like su like super breezy easy four one. I can't. I cannot really imagine that the deck is all that bad. So I should have also got a White Source. I'm actually gonna play this to hold up Solitude and Ephemerate. What do you think it'll be on for Pioneer? I think almost definitely Mono Green Devotion. I, I really like the deck, and I, I really like the deck with Archdruid's Charms. Rhinos is gone, so the play decks are against Rhinos. Yeah, I, like, I, I, I firmly expect in, like, the next six to eight weeks, Rhinos to win a tournament, and then the, the Rhinos deck is, like, uh, somewhat popular again. So if I saw to this Dwarf token, um, I get got by a Teferi... Pretty hard. I think I could just let it take one. How do you beat Lotus Field? Um, it's tough. I think I think the best way to to beat Lotus Field is try to wake root combo them as fast as you can. So, I I I think I might just main deck a wake root elemental to tutor with Archdruid's Charm to try to infinite combo and kill them. I'm also kind of undecided on Oath of Nyssa versus Leyline of the Guild Pact in Time and in, in Pioneer. Could do some streaming of it. Probably probably more so like when RCQ season picks up, people tend to prefer it. Keep that on top. Three cards in their hand over there. Uh they hard cast an Archon of Cruelty. It isn't like super good for me, but we can solitude it with this Ephemerate. They do need to land an Archon to be two of their four cards, although that does seem somewhat likely here. That doesn't seem to be happening right now. 
The weaknesses of the Esper Gorios deck are. The weaknesses of the Esper Gorios deck. I'm analyzing all of the states of modern, every aspect. I think it's possibly Graveyard Hate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. With Gorios, it's like Gorios got to be the best deck for like two weeks when Graveyard Hate was really uh, underplayed. And now, and now it's just like people, people are just like sideboarding like three, two, two to five cards for Gorios and they're, they're just cooked. It's kind of my perception. Also people like, we're not super used to playing against it and people got to farm for a little bit. They're going to veil somewhere and I'm just going to have reprieve up. Okay, well, this resolves. I played this 11 turns ago, perfectly calculated. <laughs> perfectly calculated. Okay, let's ephemerate our archaeologist. Love a cosmic rebirth. Are they conceding? Concession lag? Yes, they are. You can see on the bot that we're there. Yeah, let's keep this. We have Solitude Ephemerate. We have two tap lands and keep. Well, I got what asked for in your comment thread. So that means they're streaming? Maybe we'll read them later today. Grief Pitch Archon of Cruelty. I'm going to Solitude here. What is the Gorio backup plan? You play shitty reactive cards with apply no pressure. I mean, if you ephemerate a grief, this is this is a pretty good backup plan. All right, let's draw land. Solitude ephemerate is also like not amazing against every deck, but if you play against Jogmog, play against Domain Zoo with no Leyline, like Leyline Solitude ephemerate will win you some games. And you also just have so much card selection to like find answers to your opponent's graveyard hate. This is a big part of it too. So they pitched an Archon to Grief. They also have Archon and Hand for Bitter Union. Do they also have Persist? Maybe that's what they were going to use the Grief with. We'll see. Okay, not a Persist. We don't draw Runner Runner Lands. Also punished for adding our lore and revealed, huh? But you get really rewarded with it earlier. So I'll, I'll probably concede to a scam card. I don't know. They took the Eternal Witness. I thought they'd take both Teferis here. Will they cast a Teferi off the Voidwalker? Yeah, let's uh, let's go game two. <laughs> what a beating! Um, so I get to bring in my endurances for the first time today. Get to bring in the veil of summer too. Subtlety could be okay. Force negation. I force negation seems worse than endurance because we're mostly trying to force negation there. Um, persists. But if we just have endurances, that's probably enough. I think I'm gonna cut the reprieves and the forces. Although I kind of want to go down a time warp also, so I could play one force negation, which seems okay. I could play one subtlety, which also seems okay. Maybe I'll even cut the time warps all together, so I can place two subtleties. Yeah, I guess that with, we have subtlety and endurance. You just don't need the you just don't need the infinite turn loop. I could play one force. I could play one reprieve. I think on the play, let's play Reprieve, and on the draw, let's play Force Negation. Seems like that makes sense to me. Initial. People are downplaying Grief Ephemerate now a lot of times. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. Grief Ephemerate isn't a fast enough clock. It, it'll win you a lot of games. 
Uh, it's, it's not like you just have... It's not like you grief ephemerate and then your deck is all blank cards and then you, you're still playing a game of magic, you cast fairies, you know. You'll, like... You, you as the Gorius player, again, you have a, lo a lot of tools to... You have a lot of tools to fight through graveyard hate and grief ephemerate, like, both just takes your opponent's graveyard hate and also, like, buys you a lot of time, but... It's okay, you can also... You can also... Disagree with me. Disagree. Yeah, Mill has been pretty popular. We played against it like five or six times one day. If they persist their troll, we'll just to ferry it. I don't think the persist troll plan is very good, unfortunately. It is very cool. Results. Don't know why they main phase the bolt there. Okay, so what's nice here is we have a solitude and we have endurance, so that my opponent cannot affect. They cannot scam this uh, this grief. Um, if I if they if they have the scam card at all, so they do have it. So we'll we will have to endurance them. They probably should have taken an endurance. Although I guess this gets both of my endurances out of their hand. Maybe that's okay. I'm gonna start getting basics. I'm gonna get planes first and get forest or I say still need double blue. I just wanna get I do want to think about Blood Moon here if I can. Four cards in their hand still. Okay. It's kind of the grindiest thing ever, but I'm going to, like, witness back. Solitude or Endurance or Archaeologist, one of these. And I'm going to bounce my Endurance to hand. Or sorry, bounce my Witness to hand. I feel like they can very easily have another removal spell here. Lightning Bolt on Teferi wouldn't be the most ideal. It'd be okay, though. Main phase, Rakdos Charm, Exile my Graveyard. Cooking. Yeah, it had to be main phase. I'm just, I know it had to be, but I wasn't, I wasn't shit talking. I was just, I was just commentating on the game. <laughs> yeah, don't really care about this. Just have endurance for the um, possible archon. This card is not dead after all, and then. They play a Voidwalker, which we immediately will settle the. They put it on top. I mean, would it be so bad if we just subtletied it again? Like, what are they going to do about it? I kind of just want to show them that I'm respecting Blood Moon. I don't know. I, I, I know it could get any other land, but... Sometimes you just fetch a bunch of basics, and then your opponent boards up Blood Moon Game 3 when they're on the play. And it, like, would be better for them on the play. It's kind of, it's kind of narrow, but, you know, I think in these kind of games where, like, you're, you're, like, you're just, we're just never, ever losing this game. Like, like, playing for game three, like, sh like, trying to, like, manipulate their sideboarding is, like, I think a little underrated. Obviously, it doesn't matter all that much. Uh, we're just pending that. We have Snowlands because Ice Fang Quado is historically a card people have played in this archetype. Obviously, I, or maybe not so obviously, that, that card is not quite at the right power level for modern anymore. But our opponents don't don't necessarily know it's not in the deck. And um there's actually we actually had an opponent who just didn't attack with a slippery boggle for like five turns. Um 
and that was like very very possibly because they thought we might have had uh ice fang in our deck okay so yeah one force negation on the draw over the reprieve Okay, can I actually play around Blood Moon pretty well with this hand? What did my opponent say dig, dig it in response to? Don't know. See Ice Fang recently in modern, it's unusual. Yeah, yeah, people like, the thing is like people really like Ice Fang and it's like, I don't know, people probably like, are like, ah, Spike's probably playing Ice Fang. Okay, so I guess the plan is to take five from that and then play around Blood Moon, take five to parry bounce the troll. Maybe jump block. Brickaroo. Oh, can't jump block. <laughs> Duh. Still casting this this turn. So, yeah, okay, Magus the Mimid. Definitely worse against the Solitude deck, of course. So they do get a big hit in before we return this to their hand. Play around Ragavan by not attacking seems correct. Is Bowmaster the only thing keeping Kotal out? It's to me, I think the real thing is it's like Ice Fang isn't like good against any deck besides Murktide. But this this is this is something you'll as you study modern more come to realize is like like Merc <laughs> I don't know. It's like it's like hmm, this isn't good against anything in modern besides Murktide. It, it's just I don't know. Uh, so like you you could you know pot potentially like have a metagame call where you. Um, register Ice Fang at some point, but it, like it isn't. It, 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 it I, I guess it's actually okay against Domain Zoo, but it's, it's worse against the first strike stuff. It's, it's okay against Domain Zoo, kind of slow. Yeah, fourth color for pending. I'm gonna plus. We can attack because if we don't care about Ragavan here at all, it's gonna ephemerate and block if they play it, maybe or or prismatic ending it. So they they do have an Archon to discard now. So I think I think because because um, the rebound ephemerate will mess with the it'll mess with the um, the surveil. You just want to surveil first and try to find a hit for archaeologist. I think uh, I could find another ephemerate. Let's let's take this cosmic rebirth with eternal witness in the yard for sure. That is of course the whole juice of the deck. Take this counterspell, of course. And then I think we'll just pass with Counterspell Cosmic Rebirth. Subtlety Solitude up. Prismatic ending up. Kind of main phased. Rebirth Witness, Ephemerate Witness. Don't necessarily understand the Stitcher Suppliers here. I need to counter this. Definitely easier to just counter it and not think about it. <laughs> Alright, I will respect Rakdos Charm. I should have done this first, but it's kind of want to cash in. It's a fairy for a card. Don't really care if they bolt it. 
Bant Midrange is my favorite deck of all time. Top 8 a few events with Bant Nightfall back in the day. Appreciate you. <laughs> Playing this makes me happy. Yeah, I, I love Bant too. It's, it's, it's maybe my favorite color combo. But like, I, don't, I just have so much nostalgia for this this archetype. Yeah, like, this just doesn't matter so much. Uh, we can just get Cosmic Rebirth back. Maybe get a little punished if they have another Bolt. But if they have another Bolt, they'll, they'll respond to my Ephemerate, I imagine. Game is like Lee. Likely unlosable. Just such a grindy engine. Worth pinning the supplier. I mean, the supplier is basically a blank car because I just have an O3 in play. Yeah, I did the unthinkable and pre-boarded for the grindy matchups. Oh, that's why they have village rates in the deck. Or why they have supply in the deck. Brotherhood in. What is that doing there? We're just let Persist resolve. Just sack this, solitude him. Yeah, I just have another Teferi in my hand, I guess. Let's run out of subtlety. Yeah, Urshadal Command is a very funny deck because, like, by my recollection, it like never was like competitive. It was kind of always kind of like meme a little bit, but people loved it, and you know, to some extent, that's what matters in the long run. Average length like the match length. Yeah, it's I don't know. We we're all, we're, you know, nine matches in, four hours on the stream. It's actually not could be worse. Has been worse. This card's a Magus of the Moon. Okay, so my opponent will concede to endurance for sure. Nope. Uh, I boarded out... Yeah, the reason we're not digging for time warp with the archaeologist is because I boarded out my time warps in this matchup. When you bring in the subtleties and the endurances, you just you just don't need the time warps as the win con. Uh they just end up being win more. Like they're ne they're never beating like the witness ephemerate loop anyways. I'll respect your Magus of the Moon of the counter spell. I think my opponent will be plugging their Twitch channel in a second. So let's give them a shout out. Shout out to Dragon Fodder. Probably streaming now. Don't see them on. I'll get around to get lucky at least once. I guess not. I guess I'm assuming that's what they're they're referencing in the chat. Okay, we are eight and one on the day with Bant uh, Ephemerate Control. Let's get a four one prediction. We trophied our first league on the day. Yeah, we lost to Creativity this league. We're two and one on the day against it. Had a brutal game two where we kept it. We went turn one needle, they spell pierced, they ridden six, and we just lost the ridden six pretty tough. Yeah, I'm glad people are excited to watch Ball I've been I've been loving it. It's been so fun. I lose it too. I did, I 
did pet Lucy. I don't know. The thing about Lucy is she's always getting pet. Like just what? Okay, one thing. Okay, one argument against one argument against prismatic ending. Uh, a fourth color for prismatic ending is in this matchup. Your opponent is just going to give you the fourth color. Hmm. Opponent is just going to give us the fourth color. Usually, we'll have our Borg in play. Um. We started. We started this uh, stream off today beating coffers. We'll see if we finish beating coffers. Main deck stone is also very odd at the moment. Very interesting choice. Yeah, but Lucy is basically getting pet twenty four seven, and then Athena, Athena likes you to come to her. She doesn't like to have to ask. What does Stone do against this here? I mean, it's like a Nile spell bomb that you know we're a, we're a Eternal Witness Cosmic Rebirth deck, right? This is game one. So they don't have Suck in Citadel. Uh. <laughs> That's the send a message. I don't know. They don't have second citadel, so we don't need to worry about them really playing anything next turn that we care a lot about. Yeah, I guess they could. Yeah, they could have been playing the like the selfie rack deck. Maybe take reprieve is good, so I could cast third archaeologist. It's not ephemerate end of turn. Just let them use their mana effectively on a removal spell. Maybe this is just a force of negation fodder too. Teferi's looking kind of nice. Yeah, I feel I feel pretty good. I think about playing this Teferi. I can just bounce an archaeologist to my hand for like basically free force of negation. With a bowmaster, it's not as easy. Okay, no bowmaster, this is fine. We did mill over a basic earlier. Should I replay one? Seems okay. I, it's better against children, I guess. Let's play around children. Yeah, I, this card is kind of interesting. I, I think it's you're not getting two planes off of it very often. Uh, you can get you get you you do get double surveil land, which does matter a lot. So, yeah, I, I mean, I'm open to this card being okay. All right, Urborg double coffers. So we're gonna march my Teferi, we're just gonna let that go. Then let's go ahead and just counterspell the Karn. Untap. Still oops all archaeologists. It's kinda of awkward to be like filling up the yard this much, kind of. With them having the stone. It's not gonna be the end of the world. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and just prismatic ending the stone. Seems like a <laughs> something I'm, I'm pretty relieved to do. And then I'll hold. I'll hold up the ephemerate. This isn't rebound, right? Yeah, I think I think I want to save this to like. Well, no, I'll just main phase it because like I'll just rebound on the two different archaeologists. And so if they have one removal spell, they only get to stop one rebound. So much value. Archaeologist is just... It's just that card. Great to have a force negation up. They legend rule their Urborg. Because they need one more mana. Oh, they have a Thoughtseize. Well, I'm not going to Thoughtseize this force of negation. Let's see what they can do. Surprise! Why wouldn't they just cast the Thoughtsies first? Why would they Legend Rule first? They have six mana. Cause like I don't know, like what what are they even doing with Karn? Getting like a Nile spell bomb. They do have another Karn. Great draw from them. Main deck Stone, Reborg Double Coffers, Double Karn Thoughtsies. 
coding. Okay, not too scared of coding. So we can find a prismatic, in prismatic ending off these double archaeologist rebounds, then we're in pretty good shape. Also, if they just coding a land on my upkeep, I get I basically get to uncoding it with this time warp, which is kind of interesting. So okay, we finally bricked on a. Oh, we did build an eternal witness, which matters though. Also, maybe I might even just say no to. Oh, okay. we'll take it another time warp. No, can start attacking the Karn. <laughs> so we attack Karn. We have seven mana, so I, I yeah, I, I can play second archaeologist intentionally brick. Then cast another time warp to win. Or to another time warp to kill the Karn, rather. Um Let's see, let's see maybe if I like Mill Cosmic Rebirth or something. Oh, okay. Kind of nice. Just third time warp, so my one four kills the Karn. This is a really I don't know. Hilarious sequence. So, probably want a cosmic rebirth. I don't know. It's close. I, I, I want, let's let's just get the ephemerate eternal witness thing going. I was thinking we could get back. We could get back the witness and get grab a land with it. Seems unnecessary. Oh yeah, Chalice and one would have stopped both ephemerate rebounds. That was probably better if they had the Chalice. Okay, so... I am a mana short of being able to go to Teferi. Oh, sorry, what I can do here is I can go to Teferi. Bounce an Archaeologist, so this way I can go uh, Cosmic Rebirth back, Eternal Witness, grab Ephemerate. I gotta grab two Ephemerates. Ephemerate Witness twice, grab four. I guess I could have just done that, but... Uh, and this is a blue card for force of negation, and then I can untap and combo. Well, they have a they have a, you know it seems like they have a big turn following up. So funny the <laughs> the one four killing the car in one turn. So we go white, black, green. Return eternal witness. Most importantly, gain three life. Return ephemerate. Why not cosmic bird pick up the witness time warp and do this? Because I, I we need we need to have an ephemerate in our hand to actually infinite turn. We need to do this first. So we we were we're, we're one mana short last turn of winning the game. We need nine mana. We had eight mana. And playing Teferi first means that, you know, we blank in your removal. They push Archaeologist, no revolt to kill my witness. GG. Okay, yeah, our game has, like, that has such cool turns. Okay, so we're going to bring in the Veil of Summer, the Narset, the Tidebinder, the Needle, the Force of Negations. And I got all the prismatic endings, although I, I'm getting, giving it a little pause because they showed us main deck stone. So they're giving up some graveyard hate. Kind of weird that it's not like Nile Spellbomb, too. I don't know. Kind of not enough scam. If you main decking stone, in my opinion. Turn the fourth solitude. Probably should be trimming it to fairy. It, it is good against Profane Tutor, but I think we can just trim one. Last time I cut a reprieve and regretted it. Yeah, Anol is playable at the moment. It's good against all the Leyline Scion decks. It's, you know... It's good against Titan. It's good against uh, Tron. I, I mean, yeah, maybe we should have an Anol. Like, maybe over the Force of Vigor. Yeah, yeah you, you truly can just do whatever you want in Modern at the moment. It is it is at a, a big peak at the moment. But it's on the Mold of Five on the play. You, 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 you can't do whatever. You know, you have to... You have to have a somewhat good idea. You have to like cook with it. You have to tune it. But 
There's a big, big variety at the moment. Once you have everything, how much mana do you need? Six. Yeah, you, you have to be able to go wit, wit, ephemerate your witness, pick up time warp, cast time warp, which is six or nine to do it all in the same turn. You know, and you know, instead instead of looping cryptic command with the turn of witness, we're just looping time warp, which I I don't know if the oh so I guess I guess there's no ephemerate back in the old eternal command deck, huh? Okay, deck tech for con man. Uh, I'm going to graveyard this witness, I guess. Top deck rebirths better. I think grinding breach is still a viable deck. I, I'm a pretty big believer that the enhanced surveillance build that I've been working on is better than um, the grinding station build, but not super different. Uh, I think Ragavan is not good in these kind of decks, I think. It's like... Like Ragavan is R Ragavan in decks where you just cannot remove if if you go Ragavan turn one and they play a blocker turn one and you can't remove it. Uh I, I'm I'm just I just typically don't enjoy Ragavan in these kind of decks. Um Emery's good though. Inti's good. I, I I feel like in my like first looks I'd like to play four or less Ragavans, not play play Springleaf Drum over Mox Amber, potentially, um, and then play two or three more lands. Sorry, sorry, one or two more lands, not two or three. Probably two, well, just probably two more lands. I would not play the second Surveil land, I would just play one Surveil land. I'm actually going to counterspell this, my Cosmic Rebirth, too important. Um... So as far as that last, that last slot goes. Okay, so minus four Ragavan. I think let's just cut the Mox Amber. Mox Amber is just such a disappointing card. I know you have 12 Legends. The card just sucks. Um, I would cut the Mox Amber. Let's play two land Springleaf Drum. And then just, I would probably just play the fourth time Civ at the, for, at the moment. I guess I'm gonna cast Cosmic Rebirth now. So I'm gonna get a Surveil Land end of turn. There's not really like anything I would be countering here besides maybe Voidwalker. Uh, I'll force Navigation to cling to Dust if they have Cling. So we're gonna Rebirth back Rebirth, which can get back our other Witness. This engine is just so good against all the black decks around. Uh, let me take a look at the sideboard. I, I'm a big time cast into the fire here. Like, what? Why do people play cast into the fire? Just like, just pithing needle the one ring in these kind of decks. I'm a big hater of cast into the fire. I'll play second needle. It's also like a card you probably want against Yogmoth. Um, I like the sideboard Shadow Spear. I like the sideboard of Nulls. Um, consider sideboarding Ceremonious Rejection because there there is a lot of Tron at the moment, and Tron is your worst matchup. <clears throat> Um, I think rejection is the card you want because it fights Karn so well. But yeah, I also I don't think you really need these scoldings actually. I I just want to see you play like two or three needles post board against Yogg, <clears throat> and I want to see a lot of rejections against against Tron. I don't know what these bone. I would probably play one less bone shards too. I also would probably not play Stone if you reach. I would play Nile Spell Bomb over Soul Guy Lantern. For sure. You can also play one... Maybe maybe I want one Nihil Spell Bomb, one Tormod's Crypt, because Tormod's Crypt gets looped for zero against Goryos, which is pretty pretty relevant. Uh, seems okay to keep on top. Yeah, re rejection's better than bone shards for Karn. Tough for them to beat like just <laughs> just this. Like the removal spells are just just blank. Our our witnesses are truly eternal now. Might just cast Lauren revealed. Get incredibly wrecked if they have Bowmaster. Uh, maybe they have. They're they're like pausing a bunch. 
Did you play Brainstorm in a deck without fetches? I'm going to put it in Blue Moon and Timeless. I'm worried about not being able to shuffle post Blood Moon. Uh, you can shuffle post Blood Moon with Lauren revealed. So I, I would I would I would play it, yeah. I I really like Blood um come here reprieve this. I really like Brainstorm in <laughs> I really like Brainstorm. I really like Brainstorm in in Timeless. I, I think it's I think people are a little bit too scared of Bowmasters. I I know Bowmaster is a is a very scary card, but uh it, it's it's Brainstorm. The card is really broken. It it should just be like a four of and basically every blue deck has been my experience. Okay, I guess at this point I just want a land off the lore revealed. That give me hope. I mean, we're about to be nine and one on the day. But also, Steve, you, you should you should be playing fetch lands in your blue, blue moonless and timeless. You should have you should have like eight eight blue fetches. Imagine having to look at this hand off the Stotsies. I guess they could just concede. I'm glad we got to finish this league. We almost, you know, looked like maybe an O2 drop after uh, that sketchy game two or three against Tron. Yeah, Thoughtseize concede. Okay, um, I'm going to chew on the Naya Triumph. I think, again, one big argument against it, beyond just the mana being bad, is that Again, one of the most the most relevant matchups for it are like Yogmoth and Coffers, beyond just like the Leyland of the Guild Pack stuff. Um, and both decks play Urborg, and and uh, although usually Yogg only has one Urborg, so it's less less relevant. I don't know. I I, I may just not have the the fourth type for Prismatic Ending. I I may, I may also play this Jetmere's Garden. I'm I'm undecided on that. Um, I I'm gonna chew on the sideboard some more. I might play like an Anul. I might not. A null sounds pretty sick, though. But I think I'm more or less locked in on playing this in the challenge tomorrow. If if I don't feel like I really need to do my YouTube video instead. Um, Rogren better. Yeah, maybe Rogren's better. I I will I'll chew on I'll chew on the triumph a little bit. I was just thinking that this was the worst surveil land, and so I was thinking this was the worst surveil land. So I just wanted to like cut the worst surveil land for the triome. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's play some Baltro. Thank you for tuning in. Got a nice normal magic stream, man. Didn't have to cut short. The backup deck is Baltro and I, the game has just been so fun. We had a great time on stream with you yesterday. I played a bunch more off stream last night. And so I'm like a little bit more knowledgeable of what's going on. I'm still figuring out and. Uh-oh. I played on my laptop and it says that they, I don't think it got my save synced up. That's okay. It's just been. Ha 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 ha.